hear me? Okay. So I'm going to talk about uh, React.js today. And I know this is the slot before lunch. So awesome lunch is waiting outside for everyone. But I hope that you will not react to those temptations and instead <laughs> hear me about React. So uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, I work for Big Binary. We are a Ruby on Rails consulting shop. Uh, recently, we are also doing a lot of React.js work. So uh, if you are interested in some work, you can contact me later. This is my second time in Singapore. Uh, last time I uh, came for my first Red Dot Ruby Conf, and I gave my first ever talk. So uh, and today I'm more excited because I'm giving my first ever JavaScript talk at a Ruby conference. So uh, I want to thank you, uh, the organizers. OK. So what is React? React is a JavaScript UI library uh, that was first developed at Facebook and Instagram. Uh, right now it is open source, so everybody can use it. It was designed to build large applications which change data over time. So that was the main purpose. Its scope is very limited. So it's not like a big framework where you do a lot of things. It, it task, uh, its task is to uh, only render the UI, so only building the UI. Uh, it only concerns with the user interface. And so we can't really compare it with a traditional MVC client framework like Ember.js or AngularJS. A lot of times, uh, people can use React as a V part in traditional MVC architecture. Uh, and that is because it doesn't care about rest of the stack. So whatever you are using for uh, your uh, in your existing app, you can easily drop in React for some feature, try it out. If it doesn't work, you can uh, still go ahead with your uh, existing stack. React's aim is to be very simple. So it, it gives developer power to express how their UI will be, uh, rather than, uh, uh, so you, you are always talking about what you want, rather than how you want. So it has a declarative API for doing that. And once you declare how your UI will look, React will take care of updating, rendering, and whatever it wants to do with the UI. So you just specify how your UI looks like, and uh, React will uh, worry about how to uh, render it properly. So let's say if I have a, a video uploading job, uh, and video is uploaded to some background processing for uh, encoding, uh, in a traditional way, what I will do is uh, I will poll, like if, if the encoding is completed, if it is not completed, then I will be keep showing the loader message. Otherwise, I will remove the loader. So I'm doing something with the DOM. I'm removing something, or I'm changing the uh, header text that encoding is completed. In a declarative way, what I will do is I will just declare if encoding is completed, this is my UI. If encoding is not completed, this is my UI. So React will take care of showing this UI whenever the uh, data changes, or whenever the encoding gets completed. React also has a lot of unconventional ideas that go against the traditional way of web development. So we are doing uh, things in a certain way till now. And React says that, OK, these things work, but we want to do things in a different way. And it's worth discussing those ideas, because that makes React what React is. So let's start. First, we'll discuss uh, the components. And a uh, component is just a, a bundle of HTML, CSS, JavaScript code put together uh, for specifying a certain part of the UI. So UI is broken into separate units, and each unit specifies a component. Uh, this is the primary building block of React apps. So in React, uh, what we are doing is just build components, just build more and more components. So this is the uh, simple example of uh, Hello World component. And uh, this is the create class API, uh, top level API of React, uh, using which we can uh, create a component. Uh, the, uh, every component must implement a render function, so that that render function specifies how your UI will look. And then there is a, a method react.render, using which we can render the uh, component, hello component. And we can mount it on uh, uh, element, like I, I'm mounting it here on document.body. So component is really a simple function. That's it. It gets all the data that it wants, and it returns the UI specification that we want to render uh, ultimately. Now let's look at uh, my Twitter timeline. 
So if we want to render it using React, what we'll do is we'll just break uh, things into different uh, parts. Like uh, the profile information can go on its own component. Uh, all the tweets will go in their individual tweet component. And uh, we can break the other parts also. So for tweet counts, if you want to render the tweet counts, uh, we send it the uh, data that it needs, like tweets count is something, following count is something. Uh, we, we send all the tweets to individual tweets component. So we are sending all the data, and that's why the components are becoming reusable. So uh, a component has everything that it needs to render a, a particular piece of UI. And it, as it is just a small unit, it can be reused in other places. So like this, I'm, I'm composing everything that I built earlier into a big timeline. So uh, uh, timeline is the parent component, and it, it, it is uh, composing of my tweet counts, tweets, and trends. By building these small modular components, uh, we get same advantage that we, are, we get uh, in our server-side code, like in Ruby. We always try to uh, model code in functions or classes which do a single thing. So similarly, we get the same advantage, but this time in our UI code. And this is the right separation of concerns that React provides for, uh, for our user interface. So what we are actually doing is we are, doing, uh, a, we are building a component library for our domain. And uh, there is nothing new in this concept. Like we, we are already doing this in our server-side code. But uh, React by default provides this. So uh, as uh, you have to build components in React, you are uh, uh, automatically doing the, automatically separating the concerns uh, by default. So let's look at uh, our uh, component again. Uh, as, as the return uh, statement says, it is just rendering the HTML. It is just uh, rendering a div tag. And if you see closely, we are writing HTML in the JavaScript. So it's bad, right? We, we, we avoid this, right? We keep the HTML separate from the JavaScript. So HTML templates are at separate place, and JavaScript that renders HTML is at separate place. So it's bad. I'm, I'm confused why we are doing it. Well, this is not really HTML. So what we are doing here is we are uh, using something called a JSX. Uh, which, which doesn't get evaluated, so this doesn't get evaluated into a HTML string, a string, but it actually builds a component tree similar to our DOM tree. So this is not HTML, it is JSX. And if we search what JSX is, so JSX is faster, easier, and uh, statically typed programming language, but JSX is bad. It is not what we want. So JSX is so bad, it even trolls Google. So if we search for JSX, the first search is uh, something different, faster, safer, uh, and uh, whatever, JavaScript. But we want the second search. So JSX is so bad that it, it even trolls Google. We want this. So JSX is actually a, a XML syntax extension for JavaScript. Uh, it allows us to write uh, uh, HTML tags so that we can specify our, our UI just like DOM. And it's not a separate language, so it is not something like CoffeeScript, which is built on top of JavaScript. It's just a, a preprocessor. So before our uh, JavaScript gets deployed to production, we convert JSX code to uh, normal JavaScript, and uh, it, it, it it's just acts as a preprocessor. It is also optional, so if you don't want to use JSX, you can skip it and just go with the pure JavaScript approach. But I'm not sure, uh, like, uh, many React developers might be going with JSX approach. They, they will not go with uh, pure JavaScript. So it, it, uh, JSX is allowing us to uh, write H, uh, UI just like we do in our normal HTML stuff. If you are still feeling a bit annoyed about JSX, uh, it's, it's actually healthy for you. Uh, you can, uh, uh, like, it, it, can, it can feel bad, but you, you can feel guilty, but it's actually good for you. So this is the quote from Eric Elliott, and I got inspired by this, and I decided, I, okay, I will also uh, write something about JSX. So JSX is like durian. <laughs> it, it smells bad, but it's actually good. Uh, you can tweet this if you want. <laughs> and it's, 
it's not just me. Our keynote speakers also believe this. So they are happy eating the durian. Okay, so I am happy. Our keynote speakers have, are happy. You should also be happy about JSX. And if you're still annoyed, just give it five minutes. Uh, I know that uh, it is something that we, are tr we, we try to avoid. So this is a great blog post about not reacting to uh, anything uh, without thinking much. So just give it five minutes to JSX and um, you'll feel good, you'll feel easy. Okay, so the next topic is no templates. React also doesn't have any templating uh, language associated with it. Um, so templating language, the problem with them is they're conceptually similar. What we want to do is uh, we want to uh, have a loop which iterates over uh, our collection and does something. We want uh, to have some conditional statements, like if, if this, then do this, else do this. So these templating languages, uh, they are conceptually simpler, uh, similar, but they have different syntax. So whenever I, I'm trying a new framework, I, I have to learn, uh, if there is new syntax, I have to learn that. And that's why React just uh, goes the JavaScript way. So this is a quote by uh, Jasim, and he says that any, um, any templating language is a slow implementation, bug-ridden implementation of a complete programming language. So what he's trying to say here is that you have all those features present in the programming language, and in our case, for web, uh, that programming language is JavaScript. So React, uh, instead of, uh, using a temp in, instead of uh, writing a new templating language, you just use JavaScript. So let's say I have a list of tweets, and I want to iterate over them and render each tweet individually. I will just use the map function, which is provided by JavaScript. So there is no need to uh, use a different templating language. Uh, React just uh, leverages the power of JavaScript. Yeah, so it is everything uh, finally uh, is only JavaScript. And this means you can use your normal variables, control structures, uh, all the programming abstractions that are present in JavaScript and use uh, and uh, write beautiful organized uh, UI code, view code. This is another problem in front-end development, like how you will manage the state, how you will manage uh, when user interacts with your uh, DOM or your UI, something will change, and then you have to manage the state in your uh, view models or models, uh, you, have to, uh, f uh, you have to pass the data around, and uh, like user should not feel that something is gone wrong. So managing state changes, DOM mutations, it's challenging. Pete Hunt, who was the original developer of uh, React, he says that it's uh, data changing over time is root of all evil. So React comes with something like, called as props, a uh, shorter form of properties. So props are um, like attributes of your HTML elements. So let's say I want to uh, render a tweet like this, I have the tweet content and the uh, author name, then props come from above. So the tweet list component here, it's sending the author information and the content information. So I'm just sending tweet.author, tweet.content, and this curly braces means that uh, this code will be evaluated uh, as a JavaScript expression. So you just put any JavaScript expression in those curly braces and it will get evaluated. And then it comes, up, uh, comes below to the tweet component, and we uh, access those props as this.props, this.props.author, and this.props.content. As you can see, this is one-way data flow. So data is coming from parent component to the child component. It is not like child component can pass data. Uh, yeah, it can pass, but right now just uh, uh, let's uh, remember that it's, uh, data is coming from the top. Props are also immutable. So the component that sends it owns the props. The child component doesn't own the props. So he, uh, the child component cannot change those props and uh, reuse them. He, he has to depend on the uh, whatever data that is sent by parent component. React also allows uh, to validate props because uh, sometimes what happens is uh, you are using some library and you want to make sure that, okay, uh, whatever data I'm passing, the types are correct. So React also allows to do uh, this using prop types function, uh, where you specify that, okay, my author should be a string, 
my content should be a string, uh, my count should be a number. So in your component, if you add this, then in development we get a warning that uh, if you are not following this, uh, uh, like if, if you are not passing the uh, data or if you are passing wrong type of data, you get a warning in development. Uh, prop types also allow to specify like, uh, is this field required or is this, uh, uh, is this uh, not required? Like you can pass it or even you can skip it. So it has a syntax for that. The second way of managing data in React is using state. So every component can have its own state and that state is internal. So we saw that uh, a, ch a component cannot change its props which are passed by the uh, parent component. But a component can change its state because uh, the state is owned by that particular component. <coughs> so to uh, uh, get started with state, what we have is we have an initial uh, get initial state function. Uh, so whenever every component renders, this is the first function that gets evaluated and you can set the initial state. Just like our uh, initialize method that we use in our uh, normal uh, Ruby code, this is the initialize method for React. Uh, and then uh, in the render, instead of props, we are using this dot state dot props. So we have the uh, uh, access to that state as this dot state dot something. React tries to avoid state as much as possible. And the issue with state is uh, changing state, keeping it at different places, and managing it is hard. So what React says is that you should avoid states as much as possible. So state is all, uh, like, uh, most of the times state is present in the, uh, the topmost parent component and then you pass props below. So the child components, they are stateless. And statelet, uh, stateless components are preferred in React. So if you can render a component using only props, that's better. Don't go for state, just use that props. Keep, uh, keep state at a minimum place, like don't, uh, don't use state if it is not required. It's actually a sort of anti-pattern to use uh, too many stateful components in React. But we know, right, state will be there. We can't eliminate it completely. Like in my tweets example, if I'm polling new tweets from the server, there has to be a component which will pull that data from the server and will pass it to the child components. So how we will uh, respond to uh, state changes? Now React provides some event, uh, some lifecycle hooks. So uh, whenever a component gets uh, mounted, we get this hook, component did mount. And we can execute our code to fetch the data from uh, server. So here I have written a simple load post function which loads the post. And then when the uh, posts are uh, fetched from the server, I change the state. So whatever the initial state was, it gets updated using this set state function and then I pass a JavaScript object, like whatever the uh, fetch posts were, I just assign it to posts. Now, uh, if we consider the web 1.0 era, uh, whenever something used to change, the simplest solution was just refresh the page, you get the new data. So uh, that, that worked for a while, but as we are writing more and more interactive apps, it's not possible. We can't refresh the whole page. We, we want to render, we want to uh, change specific parts of the page. And uh, React does that by re-rendering that particular component. So whenever uh, a state of a particular component changes, React just re-renders it. So whenever the uh, state changes here, a render function will get called and posts will be rendered again. So that particular component will get rendered again. And it's not just that particular component because it can be a parent component. So it can have a child components below it. So it will re-render the whole component tree. Now you must be thinking, why we are doing this re-rendering? Will it not make my app slow? Why we are re-rendering every time a simple, uh, simple thing in state changes? So it turns out that they have thought about it and virtual DOM comes in the picture. So it's not actually slow because of virtual DOM. So uh, in React, we never deal with the actual DOM. We are always, uh, always uh, working with the f fake DOM, which React keeps track of, uh, track for us. So we saw the um, uh, uh, return value for this hello component. What it actually returns is something like this: React.createElement. So 
it is not returning actual HTML, as I said earlier. It is returning a description of that div tag. It is returning a UI specification. So what happens is, whenever state changes, what React does is it creates a virtual DOM for new state. It, it diffs it with the current, uh, whatever, the value, uh, whatever the description that is present in the memory, it diffs with it so that it finds minimal changes. So if, if I'm rendering uh, 10 tweets and nine of them are not changed, then it will only find the one tweet that needs to be rendered. So it, it uh, finds only the minimal set of changes. The other thing React does is it does batch updates. So uh, all the um, DOM changes that needs to be done, they are done in a single call. And that's why it is really fast. If you think of it, nothing is new here. We already know that DOM changes are expensive. We should limit uh, uh, the number of changes that we are doing to DOM. We already know that batch updates are fast, and we already know that uh, if, we, uh, if we try to do something in our JavaScript code, it will make our uh, interactive apps faster. But React sort of gives it for free, so even without you knowing it, it is doing it for you. So that was first part of the talk. I talked about a uh, few concepts, a uh, few ideas that React uses. Now let's see uh, how React can be integrated with Rails. So there is a good news for everyone because it is far easier to integrate React in Rails rather than uh, setting up a, a project with uh, uh, JavaScript tools like Gulp, Grunt, uh, Watchify, and everything. So there is an official gem, React Rails. Uh, and this gem allows to integrate uh, uh, Rails with React very easily. It provides a generator for installing React, and then uh, it creates, like, it adds uh, React JavaScript, React unobtrusive JavaScript, and it creates two, uh, this directory. Like, uh, all of your components should be in this app assets component directory, and then a single file for uh, managing the list of components in that directory. It also takes care of converting your JSX code to pure JavaScript code. So you just have to write .js, .jsx files, and uh, the gem will take care of converting it before assets are actually pre-compiled. So this is a simple ERB snippet. I'm uh, iterating over the posts and rendering author and content. And this is how it gets rendered. Now if you want to use React for this, then we will uh, remove the code for rendering TR and TH, and we'll replace it with call to React component. React component is a helper method which is provided by the gem. Uh, the first argument is what is the name of your component. So here I want to render post component. Then I can pass whatever props I want to pass. So uh, as we are using Rails, it will take care of uh, converting this active record object to JSON and pass it to uh, React. By default, it renders everything into a div tag. So we can specify some HTML options, like I want to uh, render this in a TR tag because it is part of a table. And this is the output of that code. So uh, we have data react class and we have data react props. Uh, all the JSON data of uh, our props is there. Now next step is we write actually the component in uh, JSX. So we write post.js.jsx and it gets that this dot props dot post, we get the data because we passed it earlier. We passed it as a post. And then we render it uh, normally, like this dot props dot post dot author and content. And we get the uh, same output that we had earlier, but this time using React. And this is how it actually looks if you uh, check it in console that data react class and data react property is there. Uh, this, is a, this was a simple example. Uh, if we want to poll new post uh, for a, a, after a certain amount of time, instead of sending the post data directly, we can send a URL. So here I'm sending which URL uh, the client uh, React can poll for new posts. And then uh, we can set a timeout that every five seconds fetch, load, uh, fetch new post and render everything. Uh, I will go a little fast because I'm running out of time. So what it does is it, uh, polls the post and renders the whole table again. Uh, this gem also syncs with asset, pre uh, asset pipeline, so uh, it, it works beautifully with asset pri pipeline without coming into the way. Uh, you can specify uh, certain variants, like if you want to use development version or production version, 
I think it also allows to uh, specify your own version, uh, your own version of ReactJS. Uh, this gem also allows uh, server-side rendering, so you can pass the option for pre-rendering, pre-render true, and it will evaluate the code on server-side and then send it back. So there are some uh, issues with server-side rendering because you don't have access to the document, the document dot body. body. So we can't use any uh, JavaScript library like jQuery. We don't have access to that when the code is uh, getting evaluated on server side. Also, if you are using any dependencies like underscore JS or something, then you have to specify all the dependencies in your components.js file. Because uh, React Rails uh, uses this components.js JS file to load everything. And then your components must be in the global namespace. Uh, it also ships with a generator, so similar to uh, how we generate models, controllers, we can generate a, a component. We just specify uh, that I want content to be a string, count to be an integer, and it generates this uh, tweet.js.jsx file. Uh, we get prop, prop types for free, and we get uh, like scaffolding. It is similar to scaffolding. Now, this is a new hot thing that uh, came out recently, React Native. It is a framework for uh, building native apps using React, based on React. So you write similar uh, components similar to this, but this time they will be specific for iOS or Android. Uh, Android is not there, but they are talking about uh, uh, releasing it soon. So the React philosophy is uh, learn once and write two apps. So we are not going to write a single app which will work for iOS and Android. Instead, you learn React once, and then you can write a separate iOS app and separate Android app. Now, if you think of a learning curve, whenever we are looking at a new technology, we have to also check how much, uh, how much time I have. Can I, can I, uh, is this a really worth if uh, I invest my time in it? And uh, fortunately for React, uh, just knowing JavaScript is enough. Because everything is JavaScript. There is no templating language. There is no uh, extra thing that you have to know and JavaScript plus JSX, but as I uh, said, JSX is ultimately JavaScript, so if you know just JavaScript, it is enough. Other thing is, uh, as it doesn't care about your existing stack, you can sneak into existing projects. Let's try React uh, for some feature, doesn't work out, then it's okay, we can go for something else. So try React, uh, let me know your experience, how you are uh, using React, or if you are already using React, let me know. That's it. Uh, we also have some, uh, React video series, which you can check. Uh, uh, we have a, a, a to-do app series, the second link, and the first link is uh, for getting started with React. Thank you.